Lord sends forth a divine spirit, and all are created. And so the Lord renews the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works.
the Greek scripture is reading from the Revelation to John. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Jesus answered, You ask this on your own, 
or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But, as it is, my kingdom is not from here. And Pilate asked him, So you are a king? And Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came to the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. May the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and redeemer. Amen. Amen. So did you ever have the experience that while in the, in the midst of it, you had no way to explain it other than to say it was a spiritual experience? A reality that was, that was so real combined with a mystery that was so deep that all you could say about it was it was a spiritual experience. Then you begin to wonder if you should keep it to yourself or share it. Will people think I'm crazy? The Celtic Anamkara, or soul friend, the Native American Humblacha, or vision quest, Praying, reading scripture, participating in baptisms, weddings, or the Holy Eucharist. Those are just a few examples of us being in the spiritual domain while in this world. For Jesus, all living is in the spiritual domain. So I invite you to come along with me here as we consider Jesus and Pilate in a moment where the spiritual domain and the worldly domain meet. And it begins with Pilate asking Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Here Pilate is focusing on just that one charge with which he has jurisdiction. He hopes to simply trap Jesus into admitting that he's a king and then ask him for his allegiance to the emperor. Without his allegiance, Pilate's, Pilate's got him. He's got him. Pilate's also attempting to keep the Sanhedrin and the chief priest Caiaphas in check. He's doing his duty as an administrator of Roman justice and power. This will also help him impress the emperor, his emperor. All these are worldly concerns. Now Jesus replies, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? This is Jesus inviting Pilate to enter his world, his spiritual world. He answers a question with a question. Do you ask this on your own? And this gives Pilate an unexpected path to follow in his inquiry. Does he really want to know who Jesus is? Is this not God's grace being shown to Pilate? Jesus is inviting Pilate to open his mind and his heart to learn about him. 
He could have said, who are you to challenge the Son of Man, pagan? But no. He invites Pilate to come to know him, reaches out to him, extends him an opportunity to learn the truth. Jesus thinks and exists in the spiritual domain. All creation comes from the Spirit, contains it, flows within it, and is ultimately directed by it. Jesus is that flow. He is that contact. He is that guidance. But Jesus knows the will of God. He knows that he must die on the cross, and therefore he adds, or did others tell you about me? Now Pilate has the choice to come to know God through his Son or to continue to focus on maintaining his earthly domain. Jesus is calling Pilate into the spiritual domain. Well, Pilate replies, I'm not a Jew, am I? As if to say that, you know, you'll never get me a Roman to buy into your type of thinking. Your own nation and chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Pilate has made the only choice he knows how to make. But he has asked Jesus to explain what this is all about. Is this an indication that he does not fully trust the Sanhedrin and what he's been told? Or is Pilate hoping that the testimony of Jesus will give him what he needs to deny the request of the Sanhedrin? Again, Pilate is focused and absorbed on managing his earthly power and authority. Jesus answers by saying, My kingdom is not from this world. He's referring to the kingdom he has been part of since the beginning of creation when God said, Let there be light. He continues by telling Pilate that if my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. After all, that's what kings do, right? Is this proof enough for Pilate that Jesus is not an earthly king? No. Jesus continues, but as it is, since there's no fighting on my behalf, my kingdom is not from here. Notice now, Pilate does not ask where Jesus' kingdom is from. Pilate just thinks Jesus is crazy. Rather, Pilate asks, so you are a king. Come on, come on now, just admit it. And I'll have you in my clutches. Swing that mighty hammer of Roman justice. Jesus answers, you say that I am a king. Those are Pilate's words. Pilate cannot recognize Jesus for who he is. It's by the will of God that Jesus is turned over to the unbelievers as Jesus prophesied. Now, <clears throat> Jesus lays before Pilate one last opportunity for him to open his heart to the word of God. He says in his last words to Pilate, For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth will listen to my voice. Here again, the grace of God is extended even to Pilate. Jesus never called himself a king. The I am statements that we know of that Jesus spoke, I am the truth, I am the bread, the light, the way, the light, the resurrection, and the life. Those are a lot of hats to wear. Think of your life, how you perceive things in your life based on the hats that you wear. Let's, uh, Take an example of a math professor or a CEO of a corporation. They would look at life a good bit differently than, say, a ballerina or a sculptor or a musician. 
<laughs> People of various races and life experiences will see life differently. A grandmother will see life differently than a granddaughter. <laughs> Jesus could hardly have been any more different from Pilate. Their view of the world could have been no more different. Yet they had a common view. Pilate wanted to save the world through absolute state power, might, man-made justice, and obedience to his emperor. Through Jesus' obedience to God's will, God's thinking, God's justice, God's love, and God's grace, Jesus saved the world. God's will is for each of us, every one of us, to know God and love God, love our neighbors as ourselves. God's thinking is beyond our comprehension in this world, but God gives us the wisdom we can handle. He gives it to us in the amount that we can handle it and when we can handle it. God sent his son into this world to become part of it as you and I are, to save us from ourselves. The same as he tried for Pilate, by showing us God's infinite love and grace. When the son is returning home and the father doesn't sit in the house and wait for the son to come in and beg and grovel and plead for mercy. The father runs out to his son. He prepares a feast, a lavish feast, and proclaims, My son was lost, now he is found. My son was dead and is alive again. On this Christ the King Sunday, as we anticipate the church's new year, the first day of Advent, the first Sunday of Advent, let's recall the Magi as they're laying their gifts before the baby Jesus. Gold for the King of all kings. Frankincense for the priest of all priests, and myrrh for the sacrifice of all sacrifices. Jesus is fully alive, always inviting us into his fullness, that as he was before he was born of the Virgin Mary, he is even more surely now and forever in all creation, in all God's children, with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us raise our voices with generations past and we believe in one God, God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God from the Father, God from God, and life from life, true God from true God, the God is not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin of Mary and was laid in man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who 
proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. Should we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Continuing with the prayers of the people. We thank you, O Lord, for Brother Son, Sister Moon, and the Star. We give thanks for the rhythm of the days, months, and years. Give us wisdom in the use of our energy resources and inspiration in the development of renewable resources. We thank you, O Lord, for the air we breathe and the ever-changing skies. We give thanks for the warmth of the summer sun and the sharpness of the winter frost. Give us wisdom to honor the seasons, reducing the pollution of our footprint upon this earth, that all may live in a healthy environment. We thank you, O Lord, for the life-giving waters of the earth. We give thanks for the rains that refresh the land and renew living things. Give us the wisdom to use water wisely and work to protect our waterways and lands from spoilage for the next generation. We thank you, O Lord, for the land which sustains us and the farmers who till the land for our sake. It is us the wisdom to value the soil which we are a part and to the good characters of the land on which we depend. Thank you, O Lord, for creating humanity according to your likeness. Help us to remember that we are part of a greater whole and that we have a duty to care for the earth, not just for ourselves. Give us the wisdom to live in the land and to treat your earth fair and gentleness and to conserve and nurture the things and people around us. I invite your own prayers of concern and thanksgiving this day. I lift in prayer the sick and homebound of our parish. For those who are driving home this day, the Lord, for those who are rebuilding their lives, O oh Lord, in fire and flood, for those who have so little to eat, for those who are caught in the middle of civil war, especially in Ethiopia, Syria. We continue our prayer as we confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives, and destroying your precious earth. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and the world you have created. We repent of evil against you, and we ask you to forgive us and forgive us. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share. <laughs> my heavens, two people are coming this way. You guys, you guys are all so sweet. I love it. It's so sweet. I love it. 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 I love
Good morning. Good morning. Please be seated. Well, this morning we were in for a little bit of a treat because you had the opportunity to attend or listen to Deacon Eric's inaugural sermon. There's probably many more to go, right? Many more years to go. That's right, exactly. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much, Deacon Eric, for bringing us the word this day. Uh, just a few things, that is, I think that, uh, oh, yeah, Deb, you had something for blue, blue season. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so there are green circle meetings going on. Sometimes the holidays are a difficult time for people who have lost, and I'm not going to name your loss. So there are our group circle meetings. Um, I missed the November 15th, but I'm sorry. Uh, the next one is the 29th, and then December 6th and 13th, 6.30 to 7.30. And then there'll be a blue Christmas service, which is really geared towards those who are grieving. Okay? So that'll be December 19th at 6.30. The meetings and service are at St. Stephen's. Um, this I stole from the bulletin board out there. I'll put it back. <coughs> So it gives you contact name and information, but um, if, if it's a need and it is, I hope you'll take advantage of it. Good. Thank you for bringing that to our attention, Deb. Uh, I know that uh, also that uh, Bob is standing back in the back there, and he is just waiting for you to buy pecans. Am I right? Yes. Or yes. gift cards, right? Yes. Yes. And I want to thank everybody. Uh, it was very brisk last week. We're well on the way to pay for them. Okay. So uh, please come see me. All right, good. So he will be in the parish hall afterwards, so feel free to take home some more pecans. Uh, and uh, if you, so you may have used them all up on Thursday. Don't, don't see any more. So feel free to do that. And one more thing, and that is, as I know that uh, the, uh, the, the uh, senior warden is looking at me, and I'm looking at him because he's waiting because he said, you better do your job today, do your duty. Uh, and of course, I said, don't, don't, don't act out of duty last week, uh, but I will do my duty, and that is to remind you that if you were not with us last week, you were traveling or whatever it may be, and you didn't get that opportunity to be able to pledge for the support of our congregation, for the support of our mission here at St. Luke's in 2019, you get that opportunity today. And us, the ushers are just back there. They're just waiting for you to come by and say, here. And Walt, I, Walt even said he's willing to give you two. You know? <laughs> he's so generous. So, uh, so if you have not taken that opportunity yet, uh, get, get something from the ushers as you go out. You can hand it, put it in the envelope and seal it. Give it to me after service and during fellowship hour. Or you can put it in the plate if you already have one, or you can bring it back with you next Sunday. So um, make sure you do that. Uh, otherwise, I, you know, as the old saying goes, we know where you live. <laughs> just, just so that you know. Anything else for us this morning? Let us listen to the words of the Holy Scriptures. Ascribe to the law, look to the Lord, the honor, do the divine name, bring offerings, and come into the courts of God. <coughs> Thank you. 
Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ is still come again. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your Spirit over the whole earth, and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints, from every tribe and language and people and nation, to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be glory, honor, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, for on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but ever and ever. Amen. the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, 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 the bread of heaven. Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ. The bread of heaven. The body of Christ. The bread of heaven. The body of Christ. The bread of heaven.